Hello everyone and welcome once again to SFF 180 and night three of Halloween 2016. What's up for tonight? Well, a ship's crew trapped in a frozen polar sea must not only fight to survive, but confront some frightening revelations about their own reality in Bracken McLeod's Stranded. That is the book I am reviewing. Hello everyone, Thomas, your illustrious host as always. I am so glad that you could join me. All right, now, Ever since that team of archaeologists from Miskatonic University had themselves a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day in the Antarctic back in 1930, the polar regions have served as the ideal setting for a certain kind of horror story. And let's be honest, as a location, it simply can't be beat. I mean, really, it, it couldn't be more perfect. Remote, lonely, frozen, completely inhospitable to human life, there's simply no better place on the planet to drop a small group of people, completely isolate them from the rest of humanity, and then proceed to make their lives pure, unfiltered hell. In his survival horror story Stranded, Bracken McLeod wastes no time piling on the misery. Our protagonist is Noah Cabot, a deckhand aboard the Arctic Promise, a platform supply vessel running provisions to oil rigs up in the Chukchi Sea. Now, Google tells me the Chukchi Sea is right there, just up the way from the Bering Strait in that uh, frozen little pocket between North Alaska and Siberia. Now, the skipper of the vessel is also Noah's father-in-law, Brewster, a man who despises Noah with a, a thoroughly murderous passion. Now, I don't know about you, but I think I probably would have taken a desk job back on shore myself, but I guess Noah didn't ask me. After passing through the mother of all storms at sea, the ship finds itself caught in a nearly impenetrable fog. This eventually lifts to reveal that the ship is completely beset, trapped in frozen pack ice. Moreover, with the curious exception of Noah, everyone on board is afflicted with some bizarre malady that saps all of their energy. But a hazy dot on the otherwise featureless white horizon, which may or may not be the oil rig that they were originally headed for, gives the crew a goal, which could mean the difference between life and death. It turns out that it will mean that, just not in any way any of them would have expected. Now, Stranded is a story all about second chances and roads not taken, and all of the what-ifs that follow those choices in life that we uh, eventually live to regret. McLeod's storytelling pulls us right into this nightmarish adventure, by throwing us immediately into the storm sequence, which I have to say is a, a hell of an exciting, intense piece of writing. Afterwards, he allows the tension to build in a slow burn. Brewster, for instance, isn't the only man on board who doesn't like Noah, and it turns out that they may have good reasons. Just when you think you've got everything that's going on figured out, McCloud raises the stakes with a clever twist halfway through the book that propels everything towards an extremely tense, if perhaps a bit more conventional than I would have ideally preferred, climax. There are some interesting ontological questions that the story introduces, as well as moral ones. But McLeod lets most of them linger on the sidelines, while the main action of the story basically turns the whole thing into a body count movie for its final chapters. And frankly, the book does leave one very important plot question unanswered that arguably it should not have. Now, I get the balancing act that McLeod was trying to pull off here, but if he ends up, you know, sacrificing an opportunity for greater thematic depth in favor of comfortable horror tropes to keep the audience entertained, at least he does keep the tension extremely high. A tension that is, once again, immeasurably helped by that bleak and foreboding Arctic landscape. Stranded is a chilling little delicacy for those fans who believe horror is a dish best served cold. And that is all I have time for in this episode of SFF 180. Tune in tomorrow for the next installment of Halloween 2016. Remember the most important thing, these are reviews. You're not always going to agree with me, but if you enjoyed watching, please leave a like, share the video, and above all, subscribe if you have not done so. That is what helps SFF 180 to grow as a channel. And until I see all of you awesome people next time, spooky reading. <laughs>